here's the long shot of my summer garden. You can see the corn is kind of creating a secret garden for me. It is growing much, much faster than the Easy. sorghum. I just want to show you what it's like to walk into a clover patch. It has a fresh, clean smell, kind of like um, hay, like clover hay would be. It's just so pleasant and fresh, such soft flowers. I have a 20 by 20 square foot space and I packed as much food as I possibly could. This is the first year I think I might be getting papaya. Um, you're in the shade of the papaya leaves, but there's some little things on there and it's getting quite bushy this year. So I think I might get papaya this year. Now the sweet potatoes. The, the red cauliflower, the purple cauliflower has become permanent. That is its summer crop. Over there. It the chamomile growing in the garden those beautiful purple flowers are the flowers of the sweet potato these are white sweet potatoes next year I'm gonna try and get some red sweet potatoes because I was growing these for the leaves and the white sweet potato is very orderly it's casually taken over this little corner here it is not a garden thug and it looks like my little garden soldiers, the California wasps, are in here regulating the sweet potato patch. They're such dear allies in the garden. Those are my sunflower starts. They are probably about six inches tall. And these are my runner beans. You guys, I have a runner bean that is heat um, tolerant. As you can see, it is July. And this one grew all last summer. It fruited all last summer and I planted the seeds. I am just giddy with that blessing. This is what an artichoke flower looks like. It is amazing. I'm sorry mine are not the best because my plant is dying out. You can take a look at me harvesting the artichoke to see it in its glory but this is a perfect plant for me because it's flowering going to seed unfortunately you see won't be viable this year because the, it needs to have both male and female parts on it and this year it only only the I ate the male flower because I didn't know so I only have female flowers so but they are gorgeous I'm trying to look at that sorry mine has um are called the aphids but it's no big deal I don't I'm not a I'm not a bug uh, terrorist you know if something this everything in my garden has to fight to survive it fought and bore fruit this year next year it'll it'll be even stronger whatever the, it's it's spawn will be even stronger um, over here we have my potato patch. I just turned around in a circle because you guys, this is a 20 by 20 garden. I have to grow relatively large amounts of root vegetables because there are little creatures that dig around under the soil base and they love to eat roots. Right next to that root, there is my, this is an herb here. This is turmeric. I eat the turmeric leaf. It is in the ginger family. It is a beautiful, ornate plant. Sunflower. I planted these sunflowers all at the same time. This sunflower um, had to reach for sunlight, so it grew like twice as tall. Hope it thickens out in the process. These are my Long Island cheese pumpkin. Going right next to my boysenberry patch, guys. Those are mallow, California mallow. And I will step over. I am stepping over my food 
<laughs> this is the melee of turmeric and potatoes and whatever else, beans, pumpkin. I am barefoot. I'm not going to show you my toes because they're not polished. And there is a boysenberry runner. I will let them run during the summer and I will trim them back to what I want in the winter time. More potatoes. Looks like we're in the thicket now, huh? This potato, this is a, a red potato, all red. This potato is two foot tall and it's in the shade and I put about um, six to 10 inches of leaf mulch on it and it keeps on getting taller. I was trying, they say you have to bury your potato, but at a certain point you just kind of run out, you know? Let me show you the other potatoes next to it. You see that? This potato is like two foot tall. All the other ones are like, you know, a few foot over the mulch. I don't know if they're all gonna get that tall. Um, I'm not like the best potato farmer there is. There's these little mini zinnias. Right next to it is my Mexican sunflowers. Those um, fight disease that um, are on potatoes and pumpkin and eggplant and all that kind of stuff. You can't plant beans with them. That's the only problem. You can plant other things, but not beans with the Mexican sunflower. And right next to that is another pumpkin. That's my Amish pumpkin. And it's going to flower and the leaves are still pretty small. It hasn't shot out. Last year, this pumpkin vine got about 20 foot tall. And this year it's flowering and it's six inches. I don't know why things are different this year, but, um, it is flowering maybe i don't know we'll figure it out when we figure it out or perhaps we won't figure it out and we'll just enjoy whatever comes of this and now look we're right back at the cabbage patch but on the other side of the cabbage patch is my chicory bed this is my endive chicory bed which is supposed to be sweet but these ones that get more sun that aren't as close to the corn are bitter. They are golden seal. They are medicinal. They are not food quality. Although I still um, tough it through and eat them as food because I have health issues and I need medicinal food. And that does it. Under, right next to that is a cosmos that has a beautiful red flower and we are now i have just just inched forward and we are now in my okra and peanut patch and you can't see okra in the garden bed i'm sorry you can't see peanuts in the garden bed so i will have to bend down here this is a peanut plant and this is an okra plant but as you can see oh yeah we gonna have us some gumbo soon. The gumbo is on the way. Yeah. I got about 10 okra plants that survived the rabbit. I don't know, but rabbits do enjoy munching on baby okra plants. See, my okra plants are not the giants that you see in the south, but I'm grateful. And with them producing three and four okra each, uh, for that's that's a lot of okra for me and I'm gonna try and get them to produce 12 to 20 okra each yeah Ooh, good times okay we're gonna keep on going <laughs> you guys by now are probably going oh my goodness how much can you plant in a small place well look out the window of the tram of the video camera tram we are now in my celery patch yes and right next to my celery patch is my bean patch these are my purple pie beans these purple pie beans were the first ones i planted they are gigantic now and they are in flower so pretty soon they will be laden with beans and if my potatoes were only ready, oh yeah, I'd eat some new potatoes with some homegrown, fresh-picked 
bean. Um, I do have a recipe coming out for my bean leaf pesto, also made with my other medicinal herbs. Oh, and you guys, look at that. We have now entered my tomato patch. <laughs> yeah. Hey, just because your garden's small, you, you still have a patch, don't you? There's probably two or three tomato plants in here. And she has flowers, so we're going to have some nice summer sandwiches. There's another bean that popped us on its own. We love volunteers. And this is a plant that grew from seed. Now, that's what I'm talking about. That's a one foot tall, hasn't flowered out. That, that's what I want in this garden. I want it tall. Even though it's just 20 by 20, I want the tallest I can get. I like it big. Go big or go home. This is my celery plant that has gone to seed. Um, I don't know if you can tell, but this is purple celery. This is a, a strong medicinal celery. You put this in your soup, and I'm telling y'all, you gonna be cancer free. That right there, these vegetables fight disease. If you, you don't even need surgery, your fibroids coming out, you're going to be set free. The leaves of the trees are your medicine. It's some good medicine in this garden here. Next to that, I've got some delicious radish leaves. I've harvest, harvested leaves off that already. And look at my little teeny watermelon. It hasn't been hot enough for it. But um, July and August, y'all just wait. Look at my last July and August watermelon patch. Don't let the small size fool you. She's just waiting for that heat. Oh, I don't know if you can see them. But there's um, some wasps over here just playing with one another. I've never seen wasps play with one another before. And they are so cute. I am coming to the rest of my burgeoning peanut patch. If you look closely, I've just planted these peanuts. And they will take over this space along with another tomato. There's other tomatoes in here that are tiny and you just can't see them. I have one eggplant. I'll try to get over here in the shadow so you can see my eggplant. Maybe if I put my hand here. This is my eggplant and it has a flower. It looks like it's fighting something off. I don't worry about stuff like that. This is my second pepper plant. I planted this one and it's in the shade so it's taking its time. It'll be fine. It's Southern California. Peppers can go through a lot in Southern California. Um, I think that's memorable. Here's another mini watermelon growing. And here's a watermelon that's in a little bit hotter spot and you can see it's starting to shoot out. It'll be 10 foot long in no time. Next to it is my sole um, cantaloupe that I know about. You know, later on, sometimes I think I have cucumber. Later on, I have a cantaloupe, but um, it's doing really good. It's got its female flowers. As soon as it fills up to it, I know I'll have a good amount of cantaloupe. And another watermelon. Yeah, I know you guys. Don't go from this video to a video of the South. Okay, just don't do that to me. Jesus loves you. And I love you with all the Jesus in me. Be blessed. Thanks for watching this video to the very end. And um, if you are not subscribed, please subscribe and watch another one of my videos.